it's time for us with me, Mr. Thomas. Chapter 8, lesson number 3, sketching improper rational functions. Oh yeah. So, with the last lesson we were sketching rational functions. What is a rational function, Marie? Perfect. A rational function is a function that is of the form p of x over q of x, where p of x and q of x are polynomials. However, if you look at the highest power of x, in other words, if you look at the degree of the numerator, and you see it is bigger than or equal to the degree or the highest power of the denominator, then the function is said to be improper. If that is the case, there is something you need to do. You have to rewrite your function as the sum of a polynomial and a proper rational function. And how do you do that? Well, you have to think back to a previous lesson, and that lesson is dun 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 dun, dun algebraic long division. So you have to use algebraic long division to express your improper rational function as the sum of a polynomial and a proper rational function. And you need to do that before you investigate the non-vertical asymptotes. So, very quick recap. What we were doing in the last lesson was we were sketching rational functions. Really, the steps that we learned, we just follow here. It's the exact same thing. We still need to find out where the graph crosses the x-axis. That's when y equals zero. We find out where it crosses the y-axis. That's when x is zero. We look at the vertical asymptotes. They occur when the denominator equals zero. Remember, though, we need to investigate what happens either side of the vertical asymptote. Does it approach positive or negative infinity? Does it come from positive or negative infinity? The non-vertical asymptotes, that's where we have to apply our algebraic long division in these examples because we've got improper rational functions. But for the non-vertical asymptotes, they occur when x approaches positive or negative infinity. So that is what we need to look at. And if we are asked for it, we're not in this lesson, but we will be in the next, we need to look for stationary points. Boo. So, examples one and two are in the previous lesson. We're picking this up with example three. Sketch the graph of y equals x plus four over x plus two, and you do not need to find your stationary points. Woohoo! So, let's first of all work out where the graph crosses the y-axis, and it crosses the y-axis when x equals zero! Brilliant! So, when x equals zero, y will equal. If you replace x with zero, you will have zero plus four, which is four. Zero plus two is two. Four over two gives you two. Good. So, x is zero, y is two, so you know the graph is going to cross that y-axis at zero, two. The graph is going to cross the x-axis when, good, it's going to be when y equals zero. And when y equals zero, well, really, you replace y with zero, so you've got x plus four over x plus two, it was going to be equal to zero. If you multiply both sides by x plus two, then x plus four would equal zero times x plus two, which is a zero. So x plus four equals zero. In other words, x equals negative four. Therefore, the graph will cross the x-axis at the point negative four, zero. So we find out where it crosses the x-axis and the y-axis. We now need to think about our asymptotes. Let's look at the vertical asymptotes first of all. But see, when do they occur? Good, they occur when the denominator equals zero. In this example, the denominator is x plus 2, so you would say x plus 2 equals 0. Subtract 2 from both sides, and x equals negative 2. Therefore, you can say there is a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 2. So, in your graph, you're going to have a vertical line when x equals negative 2. However, once again, you need to investigate what happens around that. So, either the graph is going to approach positive or negative infinity before that, and it's going to come from positive or negative infinity after that. So you need to think what happens. So to do that, you investigate either side of your vertical asymptote. So we've got negative two go out by one decimal place either side. So just to the left, if you pick a number smaller than negative two, you get negative 2.1. If you sub that in in place of x, we'd have negative 2.1 plus 4 over negative 2.1 plus 2. You can easily work out that that is going to give you a negative. Because it gives you a negative, it means then that your graph 
is going to be going down towards negative infinity. So that is what the graph will be doing and it'll be getting closer and closer and closer to that vertical asymptote. With this one with negative 1.9 over here, is it coming from positive or negative? Well, to do that, sub in negative 1.9 in in place of x. If you do that, you will end up with a good you will end up with a positive value, which means it's going to be coming from positive infinity. So it'll be going something like that. So that is the vertical asymptotes. What we then look at is the non-vertical asymptotes. Remember, your non-vertical asymptotes are not always horizontal, which is why we don't call them horizontal asymptotes. For the non-vertical asymptotes, though, da, da, da. If you look at this question here, y equals x plus 4 over x plus 2, that is an improper rational function. So before we investigate the non-vertical asymptotes, we first have to use algebraic long division. And for algebraic long division, well, we're dividing x plus 4 by x plus 2, so we're going to set that out with our wee dividing step, with our lorry, with our bus stop, with whatever you want to call it. We've got x plus 4 divided by x plus 2. For algebraic long division, I always think about Dracula. <laughs> and Dracula must suck blood. D. M. S. B. Dracula. D for divide, must, M for multiply, suck, S for subtract, and B for begin again. So, first of all, divide. What do we divide? Well, it's always the first terms. So X divided by X gives you 1. So we're writing that just at the top, above our numbers. After that, we multiply. Dracula must multiply. So 1 times X is X. 1 times 2 is 2. And we have multiplied. What do we then do? Well, we draw a wee line here. And we then subtract. So subtracting x take away x gives you zero. Those first terms should always cancel. If they don't, you've made a mistake. Bow, bow, bow. And 4 take away 2 gives you 2. Therefore, you can say then that y equals the x plus 4 over x plus 2. But that is equal to, well, you know when you are dividing at the top here, that is the answer that we get. So that is what we have but we also have a remainder, and this is our remainder. We stopped with the dividing because the remainder, the degree of that is less than that of the bit we are dividing by, the divisor. So we can say then that is going to be 2 over, and then because we've got an x plus 2, it's going to be 2 over the x plus 2. So that's our re us rewriting it as a polynomial and a rational function. What we then do for the non-vertical asymptotes? Well, we look at what happens as x tends towards infinity. So as x gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, well, really, we're dividing 2 by a bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger number. So as we divide 2 by a bigger number, well, it's going to get closer and closer and closer towards 0. So you can say then, as x tends towards positive or negative infinity, well, we're still dividing 2 by a bigger and bigger and bigger number. So y is going to tend towards just 1, because this fraction is going to tend towards 0. So y would tend towards 1, so you say then that y equals 1 is your non-vertical asymptote. Once you have done that, you start to draw your graph, piece together everything that you have so far. So we found out it crosses the y-axis at 0, 2, but doink. It crosses the x-axis at negative or 0, but doink. You know there is a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 2. Padoink. Just draw that in with all your dots, with a dotted line. Padoink, 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 padoink. And there is a non-vertical asymptote at y equals 1. Padoink, 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 padoink. Just draw that as well. From there, you need to start to piece everything together. And once again, I would start with the vertical asymptotes. So for your vertical asymptotes, you know that at x equals negative 2. That's where it is. And... If you go smaller than that, so negative 2.1, you know the graph is approaching negative infinity. So you know then the graph is going to get closer and closer to that asymptote just on the left-hand side of it, but it's never going to touch. And on the right-hand side of it, if you go to negative 1.9, which will be about here, you know the graph is approaching positive infinity. So you'll have something that looks like that. Hopefully drawn better than I'm doing it here. 
Once you have done that, you need to start to piece the rest of it together. We know there is a non-vertical asymptote at y equals 1, so the graph is going to get closer and closer and closer to this line as it approaches positive and negative infinity. We know the graph here, well, we know it crosses over at negative 4, so we can draw it in crossing there. What happens next? Well, because this is an asymptote, it's going to get closer and closer to it. So the graph should look something like that. Again, with this part here, we know it's coming down, but we also know it crosses the y-axis at 2, so we can draw it crossing just like that. And again, because this is a non-vertical asymptote, the graph's going to get closer and closer to it, so if we join those bits up, well, we get something that looks like that. So that there is what you will have for that. Example 4, sketch the graph of y equals x squared take away 4 over x take away 1. And once again, you do not need to find your stationary points. So going through this, once again, you need to find out where it crosses the x-axis and where it crosses the y-axis. So it crosses the y-axis when x equals 0. Brilliant. So when x equals 0, replace x with 0, so y will equal 0 take away 4 over 0 take away 1, which will be negative 4 over negative 1, which gives you 4. So we know x is 0, y is 4, so it's going to cross the y-axis at 0, 4. Where is it going to cross the x-axis? Well, it crosses the x-axis when? Good, when y equals 0. So when y equals 0, then you know that's x squared take away 4 over x take away 1 equals 0. If you multiply both sides by x take away 1, boom, boom, then you end up getting x squared take away 4 equals 0. You can either add 4 to both sides or you could factorise that. Either way, you get two values, you get 2 and good, negative 2. Perfect. So you can say that the graph is going to cross the x-axis at negative 2, 0 and 2, 0. So we found out where it crosses the x-axis and the y-axis. We then need to think about our vertical asymptotes. So, Susan, what do you think? Good. You think, well, they occur when the denominator equals 0. And when the denominator equals 0, well, your x take away 1 would equal 0. In other words, x equals 1. So you can say there is a vertical asymptote at x equals 1. And once again, after you get your vertical asymptotes, you have to think about what happens either side. So if you have that asymptote drawn in, if you've got your straight line, you know x is going to be 1. But you need to again think about what happens either side of that. So to do that, pick a value just less than 1 and a value just bigger than 1. So if you sub in 0.9 in, in place of x up here, you could use a calculator or you could just do it without, then you get a positive value. And because you get a positive value, it means the graph is going to approach positive infinity just before that. So the graph will be getting closer and closer and closer to it as it's going towards positive infinity. And if you sub in 1.1, 1 .1, we'll sub in 1.1 1 .1 here, you get a negative value, which means the graph will tend towards negative infinity. So that's what it'll do just to the right. So it's coming from negative infinity down there. So that is your vertical asymptotes. Next you look at non-vertical asymptotes. Perfect. So for non-vertical asymptotes, what do you do? Good. Because this is your improper rational function, you need to first of all rewrite it. And to rewrite it, you use... Good, you use your algebraic long division. So for algebraic long division, think Dracula must suck blood. <laughs> You've got x squared take away 4 over x take away 1. So in other words, x squared plus 0x, there's 0x term in here, take away 4. We're dividing that by x take away 1. Dracula, d for Dracula, d for divide. So divide the first terms, x squared divided by x gives you x. After that, m for multiply, so x times x gives you x squared, and x times negative 1 is negative x. After that, you subtract, Dracula must suck, s for subtract, so x squared take away x squared is 0. If those first terms don't cancel, you have made a mistake. 0x take away negative x gives you 1x, and negative 4 take away 0 is negative 4. After that, do we begin again? Do we stop? Good, we begin again because the degree here is the exact same as our divisor. We've got a degree of 1 here, we've got a degree of 1. It's x to the power of 1, x to the power of 1. So we have to keep on going, so begin again. When you begin again, we're back to divide, so divide the first terms. So x divided by x gives you 1. 
Good. M for a multiply. So now we do the 1 times x, which is x. And 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. After that, we then subtract. So x, take away x, cancels out. Again, if it doesn't, you've made a mistake. And negative 4, take away negative 1, is negative 3. Therefore, we can rewrite that as the sum of a polynomial and a proper rational function. We can say that the x squared take away 4 over x take away 1 is equal to, well, the answer that we got out was x plus 1. So that is your polynomial. It is going to be plus this negative 3 over x take away 1. But because it's plus and then the negative 3, just move the negative to the front. So we've got take away 3 over x take away 1. For your non-vertical asymptotes, you are thinking about what happens as x tends towards positive and negative infinity. Well, because you've got a fraction here and x is on the bottom, the denominator is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And in that case, it means the fraction is going to tend towards zero. So if that was the case, then y would tend towards whatever x was plus one. So you can say that y tends towards x plus one, seeing as the fraction will tend towards zero. That means then, as x tends towards positive and negative infinity, y just tends towards this x plus 1, which means that y equals x plus 1 is a non-vertical asymptote. Yeah. Now you're going to piece together everything that you have. So you've got your x and your y-axis drawn in. You know it's going to cross the y-axis at 0, 4. Boom. It's going to cross the x-axis at negative 2, 0. Boom. And 2, 0. Boom. You know there is a non-vertical asymptote at y equals x plus 1, so sketch that in as well. And there is a vertical asymptote at x equals 1. Again, just draw the asymptotes with a dotted line. You have to then sketch that, and to do that, I always like to think about the vertical asymptotes, first of all. So for the vertical asymptotes here, well, I've got 1, so what happens either side of it? Well, to the left at 0 0.9, it was going towards positive infinity. So I know I'm going to have some line that's going towards positive infinity there. So it's going to get closer and closer to the graph, but not touch. On the other side, well, it's coming from negative infinity. So on the other side of 1, it's not up at positive. It's going to be down at negative. So it'll be looking something like that. What else do we do? Well, if you think about the different points that it crosses over, we know the graph is crossing the y-axis at 0, 4. So from there, you can imagine, well, it must be going through something like that. We know it is not then going to start doing a load of mental stuff. It is then going to go down through negative 2, 0, because we know it's also crossing over there. So it's a very good chance that you just join them together. After that, though, what happens? Well, because this line here is also an asymptote, you know the graph is going to get closer and closer and closer and closer to it, but never going to touch. So it'll look something like that. With this part over here, well, we know the graph's going to come up from negative infinity, but we also know it crosses at x equals 2. So it'll cross over looking something like that. And once again, this line, this y equals x plus 1, is your non-vertical asymptote. So the graph is going to get up towards that, and it's going to look something like that. And that there is your answer. So that is y equals x squared take away 4 over x take away 1. Try some of these questions on your own. You're on page 40 of the workbook. Follow the same steps that I'm doing. Just remember, if it's an improper function, you have to rewrite that using algebraic long division. <laughs>